What's up you guys, America? welcome back to my channel. No, you grow up. So today's video is gonna be my second opening video for Q4. I wasn't sure how much stuff we were gonna end up getting before the year was over. I was really hoping that we were gonna get the Rage Toys, formerly known as Fury Toys figures by the end of the year. And it's definitely a bummer that we didn't get those. I knew the Mezco figures were gonna be a long shot, so that's not that big of a deal. But even without those figures, quarter four ended up being really solid overall. I think there's gonna be a lot of figures that end up sneaking into my top 10. And I'm pretty happy about all the figures that I just opened up. On top of that, I went to Kokomo Toys and Collectibles. A lot of times for Christmas or my birthday Lacey and I go there and that's just what she does for my Christmas present is lets me just pick out X amount of money worth of figures and that's what I did so I'm really excited to talk about those and then clearly the big thing that I'm gonna talk about at the end is the turtle van that we've been waiting on almost for two years I think we ordered that thing in like March of 2022 or something like that so it's been like a year and eight months a year and nine months since we ordered that thing I know a lot of people started getting them like way back in September and October and then there was a huge hold up but I finally have mine in hand along with a lot of other people right now so I'm gonna talk about that as well I don't have the best setup for talking about bigger things like this so I'm gonna do my best but if you want a good review on any of this stuff check out a bunch of other channels that do a lot better job than I do I don't really do reviews I'm kind of just giving my overall thoughts on all the stuff that I get every quarter and that's what these videos are for so with all that stuff out of the way let's start checking this stuff out all right guys so these are the remainder of figures that I haven't opened from the year along with the vintage figures that I got from Kokomo toys and collectibles just touching on the modern stuff before we kind of start breaking everything down it's been a really long time since we've gotten an actual wave of figures from super 7 we got waves 5 and 6 i think last september or october they started hitting i actually ended up getting mine a little bit later and i got the majority of those figures on sale which was really nice the smart move probably would have been waiting for this wave to go on sale as well but i really wanted to get my hands on these figures for a couple different reasons one reason is clearly just because we haven't had any super 7 figures in a long ass time so i was just excited to finally get a wave of regular release figures that weren't just glow in the dark i love the glow in the dark figures but finally getting just regular super 7 figures in hand again is awesome and second i really just didn't want my top 10 figures of the year to be all NECA figures so to completely neglect super 7 just i don't know i feel like it would have just pretty much been a top 10 NECA list at that point if i didn't get this wave there's definitely some glow in the dark figures that would have made the list but these guys are awesome like i'm very 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 happy with what we have here clearly there's some issues and stuff like that it's super 7 so nothing's perfect but as a whole all three of the figures that i got look Look great I did not get the shredder repaint because that's kind of where I'm starting to draw the line for turtles figures now I'm not gonna get the battle damage stuff anymore I'm not gonna get the repaint stuff anymore I might make exceptions for some like black and white figures in the comic book line with super 7 clearly I'm gonna get any of the glow-in-the-dark figures they put out but that's just pretty much where I'm drawing the line for things taking a look at the two NECA figures that are here the Savante Romero figure is a way better figure than I thought he was gonna be I'm very excited to talk about that guy I know I sound like a broken record at this point but it really seems like they're just going above and beyond with the comic book stuff and this guy is just like a great example of that i feel like each release just keeps getting better from that line and then we have the space adventure usagi who is kind of just like a made up version of space usagi the real space usagi is coming in that four pack he's a lot more accurate this guy is really just more so miyamoto usagi in a space costume that being said i also love this figure a lot more than i should have and i mean i understand why it's usagi i'm definitely very bias towards him but this figure looks awesome and there's a chance he's probably going to creep his way into my top 10 figures of the year as well we'll save the turtle van for last but i'm very excited to talk about that but first we'll kick things off with the vintage playmates figures that i picked up all right you guys so here's my playmates haul that i got from kokomo toys and collectibles it's a really awesome store really nice setup really clean really well organized the employees are all super nice they're all super friendly and they always just have a great selection of stuff at great prices so first up we'll talk about the sewer cycles so this was the last vehicle i needed to get all the vehicles I had when I was a kid which wasn't many I had the party wagon I had the sewer cycle and then I had raft speedboat and now I finally have all them which is awesome so the last thing that I need other than those three vehicles is the sewer layer set which they always have there it's sitting at about 250 dollars right now for one I'm sure i could find one cheaper out there but i think in the next year that's going to be kind of like my vintage goal is to pull the trigger on one of those and get a sewer layer in here but really happy to get this sewer cycle really simple vehicle but it's one that's very iconic because everybody had it because it was so cheap and easily accessible i think it was one of the first vehicles that came out i don't think it was ever featured in an episode or anything like that but it's one that a lot of people would recognize i feel like if you showed this thing to anybody in our age bracket they'd probably know what toy line it came from and outside a rubber band for the 
ooze flinger, whatever that one thing is, the slingshot dealie. It's complete, it was only $10, doesn't have the stickers for the headlights or anything, but that's really the only other things wrong with it. It's in pretty good condition and just really happy to finally get one in my collection. So Head Drop and Raph is actually my first Head Drop and figure. I don't have any of them yet. I'm pretty sure he might have been one of two that I had as a kid. I know I had him and I feel like I had Donnie as well, but I can't remember which ones I actually had. But it's cool to get another subline started. He's in really good condition. I got him for a really good price. And the best part of all, still works. So Cowboy Don is one that I'm really excited about. You know, he's one of those turtle variants where I feel like the older kids kind of thought this stuff was getting pretty stupid, but again, he's one that I remember playing with a lot of the babysitters. I think he's a really good design, especially for playmates at the time. He does have a lot of good sculpting and he's got good paint on him. He's the first one from the subline too. I can't remember if it's the Frontier Turtles or whatever it is, but I'd really like to get the Chief Leo figure. Him and Bandito Mikey are another two iconic ones that are considered, I guess, kind of socially unacceptable at this time but again there are two more figures that i remember from being a kid so again excited i could start another subline with this guy and hopefully i can get the other three in my collection not too long as well so the super shredder i was kind of bummed on i did not realize it until i got him home and opened it that he's missing a shin guard usually all the figures they have that are inside their case are complete so very rare that something like that would happen but it's also my fault for not inspecting the bag as well I don't know if I would have got him if I noticed it was gone. I might have got another figure, but he's one that I have been waiting to pick up for a while. I think he is just a really cool figure for Playmates back in the day. Like, he's just got a lot going on. His armor looks really cool. He's not actually one that I had as a kid, so it's exciting to pick him up. I still need Movie Star Marky and the Foot Soldier from that line. I have Token and Razar, which I consider more mainline figures, but some people include them with the Movie Star figures. I think they might have had packaging both ways. I'm not 100% sure on that, but just cool to finally get a Super Shredder for the collection. So Scale Tail is probably the pickup that I'm the most excited about. He's actually only the second figure that I have from the fifth year of Turtles, so the 1992 Turtles. The only other one I have is Murdude. My first goal when I got back into collecting was to get the first four years of the mainline Turtles figure. So basically all the original release characters that came out in 88, 89, 90, and 91 were what I wanted to collect the most, and then I was just kind of picking off subline figures as I went. And now I'm going to slowly but surely start trying to build out that fifth year, that 1992, and I don't see these figures in store very often anymore, which is a bummer, but I'm going to start hitting Kokomo Toys and Collectibles up a few times a year now, so hopefully I do run across them, but I'd say he's one of the more unique characters. Like, clearly he doesn't have legs, he just has this, like, linked tail that has a bunch of different sections, and he still stands pretty well on his own. Like, he has these little supports here to support him to stand up so he doesn't even need his tail to balance and i think he is a pretty cool figure he's definitely one that i'd like to see super sevens take on if they ever do end up being able to do things like this again who knows what will happen yeah really excited to get this guy he's not one that i even played with a lot as a kid but like i said it's just nice to get into that fifth year of mainline figures so my last video i opened up a ton of NECA figures it was literally just all NECA figures and it might have actually been the most figures that i opened for one opening video and somehow i still had NECA figures to open this quarter so these two guys along with the super seven figures that i'm going to talk about next are both going to be contenders for my top 10 figures of the year. So I feel like these figures are both great examples of what NECA can do right when they're doing things right. I have very few nitpicks with either of these figures. Clearly the words perfect can never be used, but these are both very, very good figures. Probably both 95s out of 100 at least. We'll take a look at Savante Romero here first. And like I said, I feel like he just has a little bit extra than what most NECA figures will get, but it's actually almost becoming more the standard with the comic line. So he's got like a good wash and good paint on his legs. They're not just like a solid brown or anything like that. He's got good line work on his back. His horns have a nice wash to him and he just looks really great. He's got good detail on his face. His jaw is articulated, which I think is a nice touch. He comes with few accessories, but they're good accessories. He has like the monkey paw staff and this like bubble effect can come on or off, which is really cool. And then he comes with this other power up that like slips over his hand, kind of like a, almost reminds me of like a Marvel Legends accessory, like flame effect. But again, a figure that I wasn't really like super excited to get until I got it. And then once I got it in hand, I'm like, damn, this is a really good figure. I'm pretty sure his only appearance is in issue eight of the original TMNT run. Let me know if I'm wrong on that one. So not a figure that I really had like a lot of affinity to or anything, but I'm really glad they made him because he turned out really well. And he 
is a really cool figure to have. He'll go really well with that Renat figure. And I doubt it very much, but who knows? Maybe one day we'll even get that Cerebus figure to go with him. So looking at the Space Usagi figure, they just did a really, really, really good job. And just like the comic book figures, it seems like whenever they touch Usagi, they try to put a little bit extra effort into him as well. I'm hoping it's to keep Stan Sakai on board, which would be awesome because the more Usagi stuff we can get, I've said it before, like I really hope we can get a little bit deeper into the line. Like we can get like Jen or Yukichi or some other figures like that. That would be absolutely awesome. But believe it or not, I was almost gonna pass on this figure and then I ended up seeing him when they were running that sale. So I didn't get just get one Space Adventure Usagi. I did end up getting two. I'll just hang on to the other one in package. But this guy came out great. Like I said, I have no complaints about this guy. He looks awesome. His armor kind of gives me like a Mega Man vibe. I don't know if it's just the boots or what, but that's just kind of what I get when I look at him. And he just looks great. I guess anytime you give me the rabbit, I'm going to be a sucker for it. And this is no exception here. Really cool figure. Not super into how they're going to start like venturing out with the cartoon line. That definitely doesn't make me excited. I wish they were going to stick to more traditional cartoon stuff, but this is a figure that i do like it is one that i ended up getting i don't know how much deeper i'll go on the other like what if stuff but awesome figure high recommend on this one so for the first time in a long time i finally get to talk about an actual wave of super 7 figures i have been very hard on this company over the last year i can't think of anybody else that's had such a good thing going that's just kind of i don't know screwed it up as much as they have these figures were pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and we actually got wave 8 before we got wave 7 which is just like a great example in a nutshell of how super 7 operates but i'm not here to be a drag right now i'm here to talk about these figures and yes i'm gonna have some nitpicks but overall this is a pretty damn good wave of super 7 figures and i'm really happy with these three figures like i said earlier i did not go in on the shredder repaint figure i feel like waves five and six both had a lot of issue as far as qc goes and this wave doesn't seem to have nearly as much of that so taking a look at space cadet raf here this was one of my favorite raf variants as a kid i said it in one of my playmates videos like there's just something about the way this figure feels in hand that just brings back a lot of memories to me. Like he just feels different than other Playmates figures and I don't know why. Just like the way he feels through this little like pattern in his chest and stuff and the way his legs move are just, that's part of the memories with that figure. And even though that doesn't feel the same with this figure, it still just hits me with like all those nostalgic vibes. Like this is probably one of the best figures they've made i think like as far as aesthetics go this subline is really 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 good if the samurai leo didn't have the qc issues it had i would almost say that this subline is like the cream of the crop for super seven like like this figure and the sewer surfer mikey are both bangers they just have so much going on with them they actually have good paint on them, good detail, good sculpting all the way around, and I really don't have enough good things to say about this figure. I'm going with the alt head for a couple reasons. One, I typically like the alt heads on most of the figures. I know with like a lot of like the mainline playmates, I'm using the regular heads, but when it comes to like the sublines and like the alt figures and stuff like that, I've been going with the alt heads because they just look really cool. Like this is kind of like a little stormtroopery and I don't know I just really like the way this helmet looks the other reason that I didn't go with like the regular head in the bubble helmet is because the goggles just don't fit over the eyes right and yeah you could do it without them but it just bothers me that those goggles don't fit on the way they should and if it did it might be a situation where I change it in and out because I like both heads so much but for now I'm just gonna stick with this all head sculpt and I really do like it a lot Genghis is our only mainline figure that we got from this wave but he is one of the best mainline figures like I think he ranks right up there with Muckman and Slash honestly like on how good his sculpt is how good his paint is like this guy is absolutely awesome I think he's one of the best figures in the line right now I would be shocked if this guy doesn't end up in my top 10 for the year I just I don't have enough good things to say about him really the only real nitpick that I have with him is I feel like he's just a little bit big like I feel like when I think about the frogs I think of them being in the same size like scale as the turtles I feel like they did a really good job with Mondo Gecko I feel like he fits in with them but I feel like he just kind of towers over the turtles and that's weird this is not really how I see these frogs usually I am one that's like bigger figures are better but I feel like this is one of the situations where I wish they would have scaled him down a little bit more and he would have been a little bit more in size with the turtles but other than that I don't really have any other complaints I really like this alt head sculpt with the tongue sticking out his boogie board shields really cool the tongue gun is a little bit ridiculous like even for playmate standards this thing's 
pretty huge and takes up a lot of room to display but still really cool his sunglasses stay pretty snugly on his face like you can see i'm shaking the figure those aren't sculpted on they actually do come on and off his necklace also is sculpted separately it's not sculpted onto the figure which i don't know why you'd ever want to take it off but it's just neat that it can move around and stuff like that so really awesome figure really wish we'd get more mainline figures but this guy does bring us one step closer to completing the 1989 figures so that's awesome all right so robotic bebop is another one of those figures that i didn't really care about like it's not one that i ever really had in the playmates line it's not one that i even remember from the playmates line i didn't even know about it till i was an adult and it's one that i wasn't even sure if i was gonna go in on or not but once i kind of started seeing where this line was going and realized that there might not be like a lot of regular playmates releases left i decided i was going to scoop up any of the figures they put out so i'm going to go in on him and the robotic rock study and i'm really glad i did because he is just like the other figures in this wave absolutely freaking awesome he doesn't have vac metal but he does have pretty shiny paint it looks pretty good and he just looks really cool he's really big and menacing and this is one of those situations where i feel like bigger is better and he looks really cool being this oversized figure like in line with the actual bebop and rock study figures he has that clear part on the top of his head that makes light shine through to his eyes which is like a gimmick that transformers figures did that i always liked a lot as a kid and yeah i definitely don't necessarily think he's the star of this wave by any means yeah he is big and intimidating and imposing but i still definitely think i like the first two figures i talked about better so odds are this guy will probably be in the first five out of my top 10 i don't think he'll make the cut because like i said it is getting pretty tight here with all these figures that i just opened along with the other figures we've had earlier in this year but nonetheless cool figure really glad i went in on him don't really have any regrets of paying full price for him all right you guys so as i talk about this thing i'm probably just gonna have to use a bunch of stills and stuff because i just don't have a setup to be able to maneuver around and be able to open things while i'm on camera because everything is an arm's length away at this point just to reach out there so overall impressions on this thing after waiting this immense amount of time to get this in hand like i said earlier it's been like a year and eight months a year and nine months since we pre-ordered this thing and i was never the kind of person that was like panicking or worried i knew it was going to show up when it was going to show up even during this like shipping fiasco like i couldn't imagine NECA was going to screw over like half the people if not more that paid for this thing i figured in one way or another the ship would be right the money had already been spent i'd already long forgot about it this time but we don't really have to worry about any of that stuff because this van did show up now that being said i do think it is a bit overpriced at 250 dollars even for march 2022 money i feel like it's still a little bit overpriced for that time i think if they would have went a little bit above and beyond i could see it being in that 250 dollars price point like clearly the glaring issue it could definitely just use a little bit more paint like i wish it did have the hard dark lines around all the edges and stuff and i definitely don't trust myself enough to do something like that on my own so it will remain like this for the time being but i am okay with that it's definitely not make or break for me and then clearly the other big issue that everybody has been talking about is the hinges on the doors and yes this thing in general just feels very breakable like i feel like if i were to just drop this thing on the ground it would explode into a thousand pieces and i feel like if i were to do that with an original party wagon it would be fine like that thing can handle the play of a child this thing could never handle kids playing with it it would be destroyed in seconds it does just feel all like that flimsy dry plastic but as far as like the hinges go the only one that really scares me is the one that's on the door can in here and i actually did place something underneath it to help prop it up a little bit better to support that hinge when it's open because that is the way i do want to display it another unfortunate thing is the cannon won't actually fold up and so you can close the door you do have to remove it to close the door which is kind of a bummer but again i get it that's another thing that's not really a make or break for me i'm not going to be playing with it opening it up i'm just going to leave it like this anyway so that's okay for me it and it really didn't come with a lot of other accessories it has like another facade fold out cannon that you can put on the other door but i'm just going to leave it off because if i ever do display it in a way that you can see it from both sides i'd like to have somebody riding on that side and the only th other thing that really changes is this panel behind the driver's seat and i like the one that sits a little bit lower so you can see into the back of the van because i feel like when they're all together i just want them all to be able to talk to each other and communicate so i don't want that barrier between them so i definitely do think it was overpriced i definitely think it could use more paint i definitely think it could be made with better materials materials even with all of those issues i still love this thing i'm very 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 happy with this purchase like i just can't explain to you how happy it makes me when i look at this thing it just feels like it drove right off the screen onto my desk like it just it's just one of those things that it's it's better to me than what it actually is like we had a few different options for vans 
I know people that got the Underground Arsenal one really like that one. The Super 7 one looks great and everybody says the quality on it is surprisingly good. But this is the one I wanted to go with. I feel like scale wise, it fit my Cartoon Turtles the best and that's the one that I wanted. The Super 7 one is just a crazy price. If that one ever does go on clearance at like Big Bad Toy Store, like the Thunder Tank is done, I guess 20% off isn't really clearance, but if it ever does get reduced, I might think about getting that one. But I'm happy with my choice here. I'm glad I got the NECA van. I really like this thing a lot and I think it was well worth the wait. Like it's definitely the centerpiece of my collection. That being said, I don't know how I'm going to get it into the center of my collection or what I'm actually going to do with it, but I got a room cleaning and rearranging coming here soon. So I guess you guys are going to find out my next collection tour video. All right, you guys. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you to all my subscribers for sticking around, liking, commenting on my videos. I just really appreciate you guys and I can't tell you that enough. But that's all I got for you in this one. So take it easy, be safe, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.